Mission number two. Today we are going to be starting off part. Everybody who knows, that means that the uh, anti-gravity system is on and enough mass being pushed on the ship to maintain it from moving. I don't keep it horizontal. I keep mine vertical aiming down so it's basically pointed at my house um everybody is on leave basically playing their deals and it started like this because even though it's an old mission i'm going to be using something that was actually taught in command school and it's going to explain it more, you know, because it's one of the tools we're going to have to use. Um, yes, this, I, even though I have a few pictures I collected for this, I have not actually done the mission. Um, and that's generally how they're all going to be. You know, I'm going to be trying to work in more. And you should have been taught this to begin with, but I left it out because it was command school and I was, you know, you should have learned about the upgrade and the rank given. Because, uh, check off. Pablo Bear, Pablo went and he was a red suit, you know, a security with his skills were highly advanced you know in science and minimal in engineering but he went in on engineering became security and this was what moved him to a rank to be in the uh, sciences because he was the first one to utilize the replicator holographic system as an external shield defense you know, it was, it was really brilliant, you know. So, here's the mission. The Enterprise versus Giant Robots. Well, versus the Giant Robot. So, this is the stress call. Somebody's, right, this is how it would happen. Like I said, I don't have anything wrote down. You know, but since we can go and know when things are coming into our atmosphere, we're going to know that this thing's coming into our Federation space. You know, so there it is. We got a call. And it's a big, giant robot. You know, our ship had to retreat because, you know, it had to find... It wasn't our ship, but one of our ships, to order to guarantee that, uh, you know, it was a science vessel. You know, a science vessel, an engineering vessel. You know, the Enterprise is the lead ship. You know, we're the one that's the first on duty for any mission other than first contact. You know, so when the Enterprise... is called in you know it, it would be the flagship so with the flagship called in and no communication whatsoever happens as soon as a violent outbreak breaks out it would fall to the quadrant lead ship that it's in which would be us so you know, this thing's fighting, and it's strong, and it's huge, and right, you know, I mean, the Enterprise is crippled and had to evacuate, you know, so why would we be sent in and not security? Well, the security's not warships. For one, those are Delta Flyers and 
defiant class vessels, basically, and all of our cloaked vessels, you know, they're all the same. And technically, just because it beat one ship doesn't mean it doesn't have a, doesn't mean we can't spare it. You know, so we're not going to go all out war like the Borg get. You know, we have to, the Enterprise flagship had to fail with trying to, to open up relations. And then we have to fail trying to, you know, cripple this thing and get it to talk, make it talk. You know, because, I mean, the Federation flagship is for rescue. I mean, you've seen the picture. It's five times our size. You know, it's got hundreds of extra rooms for evacuating planets. You know, it, not really qualified for the... And I know what people are saying, you know, but... You know, I didn't make the TV show. Okay, so... Let's say we can't get this under control. And so what would you do? You know, I mean, this thing has crippled the Enterprise flagship, the security vessel. You know, that means it's highly dangerous. We would have its case reports. I would tell the fleet to hold back. You know, so I could take a go at it. Because I don't believe in the no-win scenarios. I believe in breaking no-win scenarios. With the least amount possible. So, knowing what we know from the Enterprise defeat. Because everybody knows, you know, the Enterprise D. So, we're going to go and jump it up a notch. We're going to drop the SP-4 meaning anything goes we scan all the space and yes with this thing it's a robot that means it's intelligent but we generally can go and with that clearance we're able to monitor the frequencies coming off of it and so long as they're grounded in it and not doesn't have some psychic or uplink to some other place then we can proceed you know but the problem is that we'll have to put up an interphasic wall to block any point of view generally from the direction it's headed from you know because that way if they know where it is they can view it you know, that won't have any kind of electrostatic charge involved. You know, we, we can't let them see what we're doing. You know, we need to keep our cards close to home because we can't advance species. You know, so the best way to do that is to get the fleet involved now and they can go and institute a you know a temporal rift using their anti-gravity using their tractor beams you know they can throw all kinds of stuff and mixing them together causes sparks or shorts electromagnetic shorts and it'll blur out the area So now, we're going to get go and infiltrate this thing. We're going to cripple it. So, this is where it gets tricky, right? We're going to have a security shuttle disembark when it's time. Not before. We are going to split the vessel in two, our starship into two. You know, into the saucer, into the speeder. 
we are going to use the we're going to disengage this is dangerous but that's why we need more we'll let out all the security vessel to protect us all except the one which with both vessels now we're able to open up all of the craft and i would suggest most of the security or the um transport vessels too because although we do have our shuttlecraft or our escape pods we don't want to you know we don't want them to get their hands on these things so now we can go and we've seen what the shields are on this and they're all hull shields it doesn't have really it's electrostatic or really no more advanced than ours so we can get through them you know our laser cutter could do that but the enterprise had a laser cutter and it really didn't do any work and so you're wondering what can be done to help us defeat such an enemy well the problem was protecting ourselves without going and putting out the now remember it takes an hour at least to get there so this is why we're not rushing like the Kobayashi you know this is we're trying to not send out the shuttlecraft you know we don't want them to be captured and lose our men and women and all our species our officers so a checkoff I'm sorry checkoff comes up with an idea to reroute our materials in our bank and using our tractor beam and deflector array able to create combative hull materials like we had to in mission one we created weapons and suits with combative hull skin so we'd be able to use the tractor beam and deflector array to hold a stabilized environment together by putting them both together you create an environment inside of it where they meet you know that would be able to solidify we could transport the materials in in the proper arrangement since our engineers know the frequency and they can make a solid wall that will be an extra layer from this thing because it has only been we can detect weapons on it missiles and projectiles and but all it's used so far is physical attacks this thing is a giant robot and so we need a literal shield to do this now since we know our saucer section and our speeder section hold the exact same utilities there's two engineerings there's two storage banks so they can each have a shield now the problem is that there's an idea come through where we can go and because with our laser cutter not really effective then we have to go to a higher frequency and unlike the series our propulsion system is basically water propulsion but you know it, it's a lot stronger than that because it's a universal class starship I mean how much heat temperature do you need to evaporate one gallon of water instantly right and then we're dealing with such large amounts how much is it to evaporate five gallons of water instantly and ten gallons how much to evaporate a thousand gallons instantly now with all that being said we have a unique opportunity with sp4 and i think one of the ships 
the saucer should break off from the shield stuff and put its tractor beam to our speeder section because we're going to have our speeder section disconnect the sprite lightning a bolt right when we're dealing with a sprite lightning right this is 1000 lightning bolts right one lightning bolt equals 3 million to 15 million volts of electricity right at 53,540 degrees you know this is like five times stronger the sun our earth sun is only 10,340 degrees Fahrenheit so with a lightning bolt coming to 53,540 you know we're dealing with more than solar beam can handle with just one lightning bolt right our sprite lightning bolt is 1000 times stronger than one lightning bolt meaning it's 3 trillion to 15 trillion volts and you know I'll let you do the math for the compilation because it was just millions turned into trillions but so the temperatures are gonna be high and you know one lightning spray in atmosphere comes out to 25 miles high and 5 to 120 miles wide you know this is a huge expansion of right you know I mean but that's what our deal with you know the boiling point of water is 220 degrees you know I mean so we're gonna deal with some super plus with a uh, hydrogen and minimal oxygen combustion circuit you know from the hydrogen engine that's attached to the sprite lightning you know because the water is H2O you know that's two atoms of hydrogen one atom of oxygen so we're able to create a discharge explosion we just you know you have to minimize the sprite lightning to the speed you need that's how we our propulsion works so we're gonna go and use our speeder to aim the lightning bolt out of its deflector array the saucer section is the lower part when you look at the saucer there's this thing it looks like it connects to something like it's a parking brake but that's really the deflector array for the saucer everybody knows what the deflector array is for the speeder you know but by when the ships upside down it's generally in the back because the shuttlecraft face the front because when it's upside down the two ports the long ways go out front and the base is in the back like a speeder you know so that means the deflector array is on the back so we'll go and blast this thing full power we'll try to leave out the hydrogen and oxygen because we don't want to really use our water up like that yet but it's always possible to because we can go without a lot of water you know so we can get a stronger bolt using the hydrogen oxygen ignition now we go and do that it bursts a hole in it our security shuttle should have been out by now and waiting to infiltrate this thing and you're like why one security vessel you know wouldn't you want some sort of protection for more than that well I live in a world where my security shuttles can't be ran by probes 
you know, because you can control, have a remote control in the dock. Because every single, here's a picture, every shuttlecraft has its own dock with its control team and, you know, its pilot. And then there's the main dock, which, you know, they're, they leave there. You know, they're not all posted up. You know, there's the force fields and everything. And, I mean, if you even look, I'll show you this picture. It has the security guards right there waiting, security weapons that most people don't know about. You know, for tr people trying to infiltrate. I mean, but they, we're in SP4 right now, so, you know, these are things we generally don't talk about. So, with the shuttle in there, the pilot's still on board using a probe to guarantee a connection. Because we don't know what this thing's going to do next. Because it's going to be firing missiles at us and bullets and attacking like a crazy person. And we're going to have to be using our thrusters, which luckily can get up to some serious speed as we know. You know, because that why that's why we couldn't shoot it with two lightning bolts. The the saucer has to be keeping it in the tractor beam for one, and has to can maintain maneuverability, meaning we need the sprite lightning bolt to be working. <laughs> you know, and since that's 11 feet a second, all the way up to impulse, which is Earth to Neptune in one second. You know, we're dealing with. So, I mean, what do we do now? You know, I mean, this thing throws any, it turns out to be a little alien species. You know, I mean, it turns out that there's more than one of them. It turns out that there's, I mean, regardless, you know, we've learned we can hurt it and we learn, we know we have cloaked ships that are actually stronger than we are, you know, so I consider this a success, you know, it's, it seems like it to me. You know, we might not have stopped it, but we broke it. And our cloaked vessels also have two lightning, sprite lightning bolts. But they don't have a separate, the Enterprise is the only one that splits in two. So they'd be able to go and fire it themselves while maintaining maneuverability and propulsion entirely. So there it is. Mission number two, 100% complete. Well, let's say 95%. It's, it's still done. We, we will win, even if there's 80 of them, you know, because we're awesome. And like I said, you know, our cloaked fleet is serious. So, I didn't mean to take the prowess away from the Enterprise flagship. Because, yes, they would have been in there, you know, and handling it for first contact situations. But, you know, I'm an analyst. So, I outrank the Enterprise. So, I can take the mission personally. You know, I'll take the... But... You know, in my view, they already got hurt and had to run away, you know, but so.